in this video we are discussing the concept of sampling in signals and system subject so many times we are using the word analog signal continuous time signal discrete time signal sampling frequency signal frequency like this and we know that there are two types of signals always exist one is a continuous time signal and the most important is discrete time signal the continuous time signal is a signal where the amplitude of the signal is varies with respect to the time t due to some recent advancement in the digital signal technology over the past few years many systems are now preparing the digital or the discrete time signal the discrete time signals are actually easily reproducible they are much more portable they are very light in weight and inexpensive along with this advantages the most important advantage of the digital or the discrete time signals are they are more accurate than the continuous time signals so instead of use of large continuous time signal we prefer the use of discrete signals some systems are definitely working on a continuous time signal but the some systems are work on discrete time signal so we need to convert the continuous time signal into the discrete time signal there is a proper method of conversion of signal from analog to the discrete and that proper method of conversion is called as a sampling theorem before directly starting for the sampling theorem we will discuss the most important term called as a sampling what do you mean by sampling the sampling means taking a samples from the population which gives the entire details of whole population that is taking a sample of food gives the taste of whole food in communication the sampling means taking a samples of signal at equal interval which gives the entire data about the sample signals now the basic requirement of the sampling theorem is that we required the first thing continuous time signal the continuous time signal the continuous time signal is shown shown in the figure this continuous time signal this x of t b a uh, this x of t b a uh, continuous time signal as shown in figure x of t be a signal with finite energy and infinite duration this x of t be strictly band limited signal means that it doesn't contain any frequency component above the omega hertz the second most important signal we required is the delta delta with the sampling function as shown in figure it is a train of unit impulses space by the period of t s second this sampling function this sampling function samples the original signal at a rate of fs fs samples per second therefore t s represents the sampling period and sampling period is equal to 1 by fs whereas fs represents the sampling rate and fs is equal to 1 by t s by using the most important block of multiplier where the one of the continuous time and the second input and the second input to the multiplier is delta by multiplication of continuous time signal and the impulse unit uh, unit unit impulse signal we are getting the output y of t this y of t signal is a sample signal this sample signal represents there is a continuous time signal which is space between the adjacent unit impulses it's a ts second therefore the frequency of the sampling function is equal to the sampling frequency fs by knowing this when this is a masses signal this is a unit impulse signal this masses signal is represented by a frequency of fm whereas the ma uh, signal of uh, the sampling frequency will be represented as fs we have a uh, two frequency component now one is called as a masses signal frequency fm 
and the second one is a sampling frequency which is a del t functions frequency from both the frequency we are defining the statement of sampling theorem a sampling theorem is a continuous time signal a sampling theorem is a continuous time signal that can be converted into samples and recovered back it is reconstructed back when the sampling frequency fs when the sampling frequency fs is greater than or equal to twice the highest frequency component of the masses signal that is fs is a sampling frequency fm is a masses signal frequency the sampling frequency should be greater than equal to the twice fn that should be greater than or equal to twice of the masses signal frequency this is a defined statement of the sampling theorem sampling process is a process of conversion of continuous time signal into the discrete time signal by following the sampling procedure we define the sampling theorem and which states that fs should be greater than twice fn basically there are three types of sampling techniques are always used first one is the ideal sampling second one is a natural sampling and third one is a flat top sampling the ideal sampling is represented here in this figure the ideal sampling is also called as a instantaneous sampling or the impulse sampling the sampling function del t is a train of impulses the duration of each impulse is extremely short is extremely short and the signal m of t is represented as a continuous time signal the spectrum is ideally sampled signal consists of the spectrum of original signal x of f and finite number of replicas centered at the frequency that is plus minus ts plus minus twice ts plus minus fs plus minus twice fs and so on the disadvantage of the ideal sampling is that due to very narrow samples the transmitted power is very small and signal to noise ratio is low thus the ideally sample pulses may get lost in the background noise therefore we are going to be switched to the next sampling that is called as a natural sampling the ideal sampling cannot be implemented practically a more reasonable and the practically feasible manner of sampling is called as a natural sampling which is shown in figure looking at the waveform looking at the waveform for this one here the sampling waveform here the sampling waveform consists of a train of pulses having a duration of tau and separated by the sampling time ts the base band or the modulating signal x of t and a sample signal s of t is equal to c of t into x of t as shown in figure the sample signal is obtained by the multiplication of x of t and the c of t the sample signal is a train of pulses of width tau whose amplitude is varying this pulses do not have a flat tops but their tops follow but their tops follows the waveform of the signal x of t the sampling rate is greater than or equal to the nyquist rate natural sampling is also called as a chopper sampling because the waveform of the sample signal appears to be chopped off from the continuous time signal x of t the different advantages of the natural sampling are the generation is easy we can use the practical low pass filter for the reconstruction for large values of 
tau, there is a possibility of crosstalk. Third one, flat top sampling. The natural sampling is rarely employed in practice instead of other practical sampling techniques called as a flat top sampling. In flat top sampling technique, the analog signal X of T is sampled instantaneously at the rate Fs is equal to 1 by Ts and the duration of each sample is of tau t. Thus, the amplitude of the pulses are constant equal to the corresponding sample value. The flat top pulses can be obtained by using the sampled and whole circuit shown in figure. The sampled and the whole circuit consists of two FPT switches and the one capacitor as shown in figure. The analog signal X of T is applied at the input of this circuit and sampled signal S of T is obtained across the capacitor C. A gate pulse is applied to the gate terminal of first fate for a very short duration of the time. The sample switch will turn on and the capacitor it charges through it sample value X of NTS. The sampling switch is then turned off. Both the fates will be remain off for a duration of tau. And the capacitor will hold the voltage across it constant for this period. Thus the pulse is stretched to tau second. At the end of pulse interval tau. At the end of pulse interval of tau. A pulse is applied to the gate terminal 2, G2, that is the gate terminal of discharge fade. This will turn on the discharge fade and short circuit the capacitor C. The output voltage then reduces to 0 as shown in figure. We say that toward this point the sampling switch is on and toward this point, toward this point, the discharge switch is on. The most advantages of the most important advantage of the flat top sampling is that better signal to noise ratio due to increase the signal power due to that the finite width tau of the pulses generation is again easy. Practical filters can be used for the reconstruction and the less distortion is occurs in a fat top sampling. Thank you so much dear students.